So right here, the next turn shows up. In one tenth of a mile, it will, turn right onto William T. As Parkway. you can see, she's talking now, and it will give you on the right side of the screen a countdown. Hey, what's up, YouTube? Back in the Focus AC video. This intro is going to be long. I will have a time code in the comment section for you to skip past the intro because I want to give you the backstory on this and how I found this out. I'm going to show you how to get the navigation information right here where this car is. On the right side, you see the car. It will actually show you navigation information from the, the sync navigation in the car and it will do it for Android Auto with Google Maps. Now, in my last video with Sync 3.4, I did mention the fact that I'm pretty sure in that video I mentioned this. I don't remember off the top of my head, but I, I say a lot of crap in these videos and I say it really fast, so I don't remember what I said, but I'm pretty sure in that video, I was talking about how I wanted to get the navigation information to be on the right side here on the gauge cluster with Android Auto. Sync 3.4 does enable Android Auto to do that. However, you do have to enable it first in Foursan. Um, so that's where I was wrong in the last video. So I'm gonna show you how to do that and, and, and get it to work. Now, how I found this out was I was doing some research for, and then I came across this thread here. Morning Z posted uh, my video on the sync, uh, um, I'm sorry, on the Focus RS forums. And I, I'm, I, I wanna say thank you. Thank you to anybody that takes my videos and posts it anywhere because that's freaking legit. I was wondering why that video did so well. I did find out later on the video was in people's Google feeds and um, it was apparently posted on forums. So thank you so much because that's freaking awesome. I was reading through that and I found out that, uh, yeah, you actually do have to f you have to program it to get it to work. It's not something that just comes with the update. So I'm going to show you how to use that. I'm using my HP Stream 7. This is a complete, full-blown Windows 8 tablet. I've used it plenty of times before in my videos years ago when I did Foursquare stuff. I stopped doing Foursquare stuff. I stopped researching and doing all that stuff and figuring all that stuff. Well, finding all that stuff out. I'm not the one figuring it out. I'm finding it, and I'm giving you the visual aid so you can do it. I actually stopped um, uh, doing all that stuff. <laughs> But I'm back on it now. I find y'all giving us some great information. I gotta give y'all the visual aid for it. I'm using my OBD Link MX. It's right here. Love it. I'm gonna show you the step by step process. It's super easy. We're not gonna be using as built information. We're going to just be using the drop down menu because that's the easy way to do it. And the easy way is there. So why show you the way that can possibly mess something up? So uh, let's go. So you actually do need four scans. So click the link in the description. They're gonna take you to the four scan website. Click on products. From there, you want to actually download Foreskin. This is the version I downloaded on my uh, HP stream. It is version 2.3.33 beta for Windows. And you do want to get your extended license too. So get your free extended license key. You're going to have to actually sign in. This is the second page it shows you. The first page, you have to sign in with your information to the Foreskin form. And then you're taken here to generate your extended license key. You need your first and last name or your company name, a contact phone number, hardware ID, and then the type, which is a trial. You're going to generate it. Uh, your hardware ID here, let me I breeze past that really quickly. The hardware ID, you have to get that from the Foreskin um, software. So after you download that, open up Foreskin, and then you're going to click on the wheel down here at the bottom. That will give you the information you need to copy your extended license key and then put that here and it's going to generate your trial. The trial does last for two months, so keep that in mind while you're using Foreskin and and programming all these cool things in your car. So let's go back to the car to finish off the video. So first things first, make sure your vehicle is in the on position when it comes to the ignition. Just push the button once, don't push it twice. So push it once, because pushing it twice is just gonna turn it back off. Uh, don't turn the vehicle on, do not start the vehicle. Just make sure it is in the on position. Then second, we're going to go ahead and connect our tablet, our Windows uh, tablet, our Windows uh, computer, whatever you're using, it needs to be Windows. And we're going to go ahead and open up Foursquare and connect that to it. But before we actually open up Foursquare, if you have an OBD Link MX like I showed at the beginning of the video, this is where you go into the Bluetooth settings on Windows and connect it to the Bluetooth settings on there. OK, so we got Foursquare open. We're going to go ahead and click OK. Uh, uh, let me not look down there. At the bottom here, you will see what looks like plugs. Make sure those plugs, our phone's having a hard time. Make sure those plugs, the bottom left plug here, make sure that you click that one and that's going to actually connect your your Bluetooth um, OBD reader to Foursquare or whatever you're using. So we're gonna start the connection here. We're going to click okay. And uh, we're gonna let it find it through the Bluetooth and do its thing. I'm using the OBD Link MX, like I said before. So that's why it's going through Bluetooth. I already have a vehicle profile set. So I'm just gonna click, click okay or yes. It's going to continue to load all this information up and um, 
Once it's finished loading the information, you will see at the bottom it says ready. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and then click on what looks like, to me, it looks like a chip. Uh, we're gonna click on the chip here on the left side. Then you'll bring up all of your information, all of your ASBIT information for your PCM, your APIM, your IPC. Now, the one we wanna actually go to is the IPC. Um, and we're going to just click on the IPC module configuration, not as built format. The as built format is not the, the way I'm going to do it in this video. I'm just going to show you the easy way. Click the play button down here at the bottom and it's going to load up all the information. Boom. Now we have all the information. We have our chimes, all these things here that are enabled and you can just click, click, quickly enable and disable them. We're going to scroll all the way down. You can check this out. Just uh, if you go on here, look at all this stuff in here and see what you can enable and disable and have fun with it. Um, I'm gonna scroll all the way down to navigation repeater. That's the, what we're looking for. Come on phone. My phone's getting hot from recording this in 4K and uh, it's going wild. So um, navigation repeater, it's on disable. Enable that by clicking the edit selector here at the bottom and then we're going to click enable and then we're going to click the check mark. That enables it here, but we have not actually written the information back to the vehicle. So then at the bottom, you'll see write, and we're going to write it. We're going to click yes. We're going to click yes. You will see it load down here. Let that completely load. And then you'll see here, your stuff will restart. Uh, from here, I do turn the vehicle off and let it sit for a little bit. And then uh, I'll start it back up and show you what it's looking like. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna do is once you have your vehicle back on, you're going to click the left arrow here and mess with your gauge cluster. Of course, you know that's your left hand right here that does that. Uh, we're going to go here down to settings and then we're going to locate display. Now, if you go to this first without enabling this, you will see navigation information will not be there. Uh, for some of you that, you know, you may have it, you may not have it, but I didn't have it. So navigation information isn't there. This is what you want, check that and then you will have the navigation showing right here on the right side of the screen. I'm gonna set a destination and go for a drive and I will show you what it looks like. I really like it. And then I'll show you again with Android Auto using Google Maps. Okay, so I have made it to a local park here and I'm gonna navigate. Hey, look at the park, it's nice. I wanna go ahead and navigate to Publix. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Publix here. I have this set as one of my histories to make this super easy and fast. Obey traffic. And as you'll see here, the information shows up at the bottom, or the information shows up right here on the right side of the screen. I'm gonna go ahead and start driving. I'm gonna record this as much as I can so you can see exactly how this works. Uh, it does take over for the car and it does show you on the right side what the uh, looks what it looks like here the next your next turn your next turn always shows up here So let's go ahead and put this down and try to do this safely and as legally as possible So right here the next turn shows up In one tenth of a mile it will, turn right onto William T. As Parkway. you can see she's talking now and it will give you on the right side of the screen a countdown And give you a distance meter or whatever to where your next turn is. I really like that I really 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 like that. So let's go ahead and get on the road Another really cool thing about this too is that, as you can see, I no longer have navigation shown right here, but on my screen, it still has my countdown for how long, uh, the distance, the amount of distance it takes, it's gonna take to get to my next turn. So you don't have to have navigation up for this to work. So that's really a nice feature that comes in handy. Okay, so here's a good example of the characters will sh uh, overlap, or I guess uh, they won't show all of it. So the name of this road is Washington Road, but it's a little too long, so it just shows Washington. And then it has uh, my left turn showing up in 4.6 miles. And all this information shows up right here as well. So you can see it here and there, it's really cool. And you see at, when there's no line on the right side of it, there's a bigger, a bigger uh, gap or like an empty space looking and that's where that line will pop up. So this is to show you what roundabouts look like. Uh, when you actually approach a roundabout, you'll see it like this and it actually, if, if, as you hear her voice speaking, you'll hear she says to take the third exit and it displays that I need to take the third exit right here on the screen as well. And this is what it looks like when you've reached your destination. It will show you the line, it will show you a flag on either side of the street, either your left or your right, and you made it. Yeah! So now we'll switch over to my OG, that's my baby right there. I'm switching over to the Pixel 1, and I'm gonna show you through Android Auto how this functions. Very, very similar. With Android Auto, I'll give you just a quick glimpse. You can see here, it still works the same way for the most part. I'll show 
show you what's different in a second. You do still have your left turn coming up. It just says turn left, it doesn't actually say, actually it is a little different. It doesn't say the name of the street, it just says turn left and then it gives you the amount of t uh, miles left. We'll see if that changed. All right, so I see why it was saying just turn left. It was having me go away that was taking me straight to the destination. So I turned off. Now you can see I'm turning right on Georgia 3. And there goes Google Maps again, putting the actual name of the highway but it does have the name of the road on there. And when I get up there, I'll show you that it will not actually give you the line that tells you the amount of distance you have left to make the turn. As you can see, not giving me the line. So yeah, no line with Google Maps, but you do get it with stock navigation, so there you go. All right, so one thing I could not get to work was actually uh, the, uh, this, the, okay, so on the right side, when I got to my destination, as you saw on the sync navigation, it actually had um, destination it had a flag on the left side of the right side of the street where it was at on Google Maps it was not doing that so that's the one thing I could not get I, that I didn't get to work on Google Maps but everything else works like it's supposed to oh and you don't have the line on Google Maps to let you know your distance before your turn so other than that though you still do get the navigation here on the right side of the screen with Google Maps and you do get it of course with the sync navigation so that's it for this video thank you guys for watching if you have a video idea hit me up in the comment section if you found some things that um, you uh, want to see programmed um, I might do it so just hit me, hit me up in the comment section let me know what it is and I might do a little visual aid for you to show you what it's like and how how it works so thank you guys for watching i will see you in the next video i'm gone